Hi everybody, I'm Gail Z. Martin, and this is another edition of the Thrifty Author Meetup. Today, I want to talk a little bit about book marketing in a weird world, because every time I think it can't get any weirder out there, or I've checked all the boxes off my Apocalypse Bingo card, there's another whole secret square out there that I wasn't looking for, whether it's lethal lizards or killer bees or, uh, you know, I'm waiting for Godzilla. He's kind of my center square. And I really don't want to tempt fate by even saying that because, you know, I'm sure I'm going to go check the news and there's a monster lizard closing in on Southeast Asia. Uh, so we are living in a really, really weird time. And one of the side effects of that is that we're not going out as much as we used to. Sometimes for personal health reasons that folks don't want to or can't safely leave their homes. Also because many of the places that we previously liked to gather, whether they're conventions or bookstores or um, community events like book festivals aren't being held or they're not safe to have the same kind of crowd that we used to have. And so if you're an author with a new book, or you're going to have a new book, or you just want to keep your backlist in people's minds because, hey, folks are home with a little more time on their hands. Let's read some books and why not read yours? How do you do some of the book marketing that you need to do to get your book out into the world when many of the traditional things like going to a convention and doing a book signing just, just aren't a possibility right now? I have some ideas on that. One is that you want to look at your marketing in light of how can you bond with your existing readers, the people who are already reading your stuff, already love your series and your characters, so that they know you care about them and that they know what you're working on and they know when you bring something out. And then there is the possibility of bringing in new readers who may have amazingly enough, read through their to-be-read pile and are going, I could use a good book. And I like this kind of book. And oddly enough, that's exactly the kind of book you write. So great, great opportunity to stay close with the people who already know and love you and bring some new people into the fold. Well, one of the things that can really help to both bond and bridge are video readings. Uh, you don't have to be fancy. You don't have to be a celebrity. You are seeing an awful lot of very regular people getting on Zoom, getting on Facebook Live, getting on um, YouTube and their phones and cutting some video because we have all been away from other people for a while. And even though we thought that might be a good thing, as it dragged on, we're starting to go, you know what, I, I kind of miss having people around. The other thing about doing a video is that it does let people feel like they've gotten to know you, feel like they've sat down across the table from you. You can do a book reading. You can give people your 30 second elevator pitch line for the book, the one that you would normally give at a book festival, for example, when somebody comes up and says, well, what's this book about? You can do all those things on video. And you can also talk a little bit about the background for a book if you happen to be in a place, near a place that you can still safely visit that pose the background for a book, you can take pictures, you can show people video, you can say, and this is the thing I was talking about or that I used as an inspiration when I got to that chapter. And those are all wonderful things that people want to know. If you can't go to some place like that and you don't have personal pictures, look at the Facebook presence of places and landmarks and tourist attractions on Facebook and Pinterest and share some of those with your readers to give them a visual because we read books all the time that are set in places we've never personally visited. And I think a lot of readers are very interested in finding out, well, what did the real place look like? Well, what was the real history on that? What inspired you to kind of take that story a different way? And those are all wonderful tales that you can tell via video or with pictures and social media that don't require being anywhere or going anywhere outside your house. You can do all those things from home. Um, you can also, if, if you like doing the written word, share an interview with a character. 
or talk a little bit about where your ideas came from for a particular book or series. Readers love to get that inside scoop, that behind the scenes look at what was going on with your brain or, or what inspired you, or who is your character on a lazy Sunday when they're not off saving the world? What would they do on New Year's Eve? Where would they go for 4th of July? Those little vignettes bring a lot of humanity to our characters beyond what is in the canon, so to speak. And that's something I love as a reader when I get those little glimpses. I love behind the scenes stuff and, and I'm not alone. A lot of readers love those little bits. And if you know your, your story and your characters well, all you have to do is ask your character, so what would he be doing on New Year's Eve? And, and it's gonna come to your mind. And whether that's a paragraph or two paragraphs or half a page, that's worth sharing. And that's a lot of fun. And that's another way to get people interested and engaged and keep them thinking about your series in between books. Um, of course, having something out on a site like Prolific Works or Book Sweeps or Book Funnels where you can share a short story, a novella, an entire book, or just an excerpt from a book is a great way to attract new readers and simultaneously add people to your mailing list. And of course, your mailing list is your lifeblood because social media sites come and go. They could turn off tomorrow and if you don't have a newsletter list, you have no way of staying in touch with those readers who really want to hear from you. So think about looking at, now that you have a little spare time maybe on your hands, think about figuring out how Prolific Works or Book Sweeps or Book Funnel or uh, any of those giveaway sites work so that you can start bringing in more readers to sample your work when you're part of a multi-author giveaway and also collect those very important email addresses. Um, and, and by the way, you can be on those, those giveaway sites even if your work is in Kindle Unlimited as long as your excerpt is not more than 10% of your word count. We had to hash that out for one that I was in. So if you think that you can't do it because all of your stuff is in KU, that's not the case. Just make sure you don't exceed that 10%. This is also another great time, since none of us have our normal routines or travel schedules, to start making friends with other authors. And how do you do that? Well, you follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and you comment on their posts, not promotional for you, but agree with them if you do. I would not recommend arguing. Uh, but get into conversations with them, support their new releases boost their presence, share their posts, get talking to them. And once you have a rapport, especially if you're a published author and you have maybe some track record, reach out and, and, and get a private conversation going. Because right now, more than ever, we need to be promoting each other. I'm a huge believer in authors collaborating on cross-promotion, lifting each other's uh, visibility, uh, really boosting each other. This is a great time to start building some of those bonds and bridges and getting to know people while we're not all running around quite as much as we usually are, like, you know, chickens missing our heads. And I think another thing <clears throat> that sometimes gets overlooked when we're hurrying is share some of your other non-writing hobbies. Uh, or passions. Are you really into photography? Show us some of your pictures. Are you really into knitting? Show us your projects. Tell us what you're doing. Share your, your progress every day on that amazing afghan or, or comforter that you're making for your niece or nephew. Um, do you paint ceramics? Show us the before and after. Show us the, the here's what I painted today. We love seeing that about other people. And especially if it is someone that we already feel a bond with and an interest in because we love your books, it, it lets readers see a side of us that they don't normally get to see at a convention or at a book signing or, or just any other kind of book related event. It's not something we usually talk about because we're often busy and we're out there talking about our books. But those insights into the things that you really enjoy, maybe, maybe it's a nerdy history thing that you're into. Uh, you, you like battlefields, you like cemeteries, you are really into vintage clothing, 
whatever it is, start talking about it. That is a wonderful book tangent, but not directly book related thing that you can talk about. It's, it's not saying buy my book, buy my book, which nobody wants to hear, but it is saying, you know, my history, my uh, lifetime fascination in fill in the blank here really played a role in how I created this series or I knew this important thing, which I use in book five, because I once visited this place when I was in fifth grade and it really left an impression on me. So those are all kinds of things that, that we can do as book marketing in a very weird world without leaving home, without the structure that we normally have of all those book promotion events, knowing that readers have more time on their hands too, more time to interact with you on social media, more time to watch videos, more time to read books, more time to go looking for new books and authors. And there's an openness, I think, right now because normal isn't normal anymore and everything is changing, that people may be not only on one hand want to reread all their favorites from their favorite authors because it's comforting and it's safe, but we're doing a lot of things differently now. Once you get in the habit of doing things differently, different doesn't always scare you quite as much. So maybe it's a great time to take a chance on a new author or a new book. And I think that if as an author, you keep those things in mind, you can do some very successful book marketing, even in today's weird world. Thanks for joining me. I'm Gail Z. Martin, and this has been the Thrifty Author Minute. You can find the Thrifty Author Success Network on meetup.com, which is where our videos post and where our in-person meetings are. And with the video now, the world is our meeting place. So I will see you again soon. Thanks for joining me.